Always be aliens, never rule out the aliens. But until we've proven that aliens do exist, we're going to have to admit that these are some real mysteries. From the literal mystery spot to the river that cooked the conquistadors. Here's back again and I want to give a shout out to my two returning viewers I think there's three of you now the 300 I call you all right I want to look at strange places that scientists still can't explain I did a previous video like this before but they were different locations these are brand new locations they may not be brand new to you but they're brand new to me so without further ado <laughs> Number 15. The Mysterious Spot Back in 1939, the Mysterious Spot opened up in Santa Cruz, California as a tourist attraction, and its proprietor was George Prather. Prather made his living as a welder, mechanic, and inventor. Back in those days, the automobile was giving Americans a freedom they had never known and all kinds of new roadside attractions opened up. Although none of them were quite like the mystery spot, when he was exploring this area, Prather noticed his compass was behaving strangely. And then when he climbed the hill, he began to feel dizzy and uncomfortable. So of course, he bought the land and opened up his attraction right there there, in what is known as the crazy house, there are things which seem to defy gravity and physics in general. There are tilted floors which make it seem as though people are able to lean an incredibly long way down. There are even balls and water which flow uphill. Among many other strange and unexplained attractions, although one theory is that a meteor strike caused a disruption to the regular behavior of things in that spot. Before we go, I wonder is that related to some type of uh, effect on the magnetic pole? It could be, because it's like the gravity is pulling in strange directions. Not, uh, or it's like there's some type of, uh, I want to say 30 degree angle of gravity or something, uh, or could be, uh, 150 degrees depending on how you're looking at it, <laughs> but yeah, it's really weird, it's really weird, I, I don't know what to say, yeah, that's either something is affecting the North Pole, is pulling at these angles, or, I mean, it could have been the polarity of that meteor that dropped, or that supposedly fell there it could be something else one like this video smack uh, i'm gonna skip that i already liked the video it is known as the river that kills everything that falls into it. It was first reported by conquistadors who made the big mistake of deciding to take a dip and ended up apparently being boiled alive while their companions watched from the sidelines. Since then, the legend has developed and it was considered to be the river which ran through the lost city of gold. But scientists laughed at the idea saying that hot rivers only come from volcanoes and there are no volcanoes in that place part of the Amazon. However, one Peruvian geoscientist believed otherwise, and he went out to prove that the boiling river really did exist. Andres Russo was led to the mysterious river by his aunt, who had visited it before. I think I heard about this geologist, uh, or did you say geologist or geophysicist? I don't know. I can't remember. I'm not rewinding. <laughs> but yeah, I think I heard this story before on another podcast. And this guy looked for this place and he stumbled upon it uh, somehow. I guess, yeah, his aunt showed him and he followed where she said it was. And I recall he was going, he was taking a long time to explain the story, but it's really interesting. And I think he tested, uh, or somebody tested with him, actually boiling eggs in this thing. And this is fright. I mean, it's, there's good, there's a lot of maybe energy or something useful you can get from this river, but it's also kind of scary in a way. Because anything that drops in there is basically boiled alive. That's pretty scary. I guess you're not going to see any fish in there. <laughs> of course, unless you want to boil some meat and pull it out or boil some veggies and tie them to the string or tie the pot to a string and put it in and pull it out. 
and he made sure to pack a thermometer. When he got there, he measured it as 187 degrees Fahrenheit. Not quite boiling, but pretty close. Only no one knew why it would be so I didn't even see this part before I said boil an egg, but anyway. Hot. After more study, Russo discovered that it may turn out to be the fault of underground hot springs, which are heating up the river. Did he go for a swim? Well, no, not after witnessing a few animals fall in and be cooked to death. Number 13. Yonaguni the island of Yonaguni, off the coast of Japan, is one of the most fascinating and mysterious places on Earth. And we could honestly fill this whole video with the topic just from that island. But we are going to concentrate on one aspect of it, which is in fact just off the island, deep under the water of the Pacific Ocean. This area of sea, which lies between Japan and Taiwan, is a popular diving area because of the many hammerhead sharks in the region. And in 1986, one diving expedition uncovered something truly astonishing, a series of rock structures that resemble square pyramids, which surely can only have been created by intelligent life. Were there incredibly ancient humans living here a million years ago with extremely advanced technology? Is this proof of alien life, or did the ancient Japanese or Chinese try and build a city under the ocean? Some people People say they just formed naturally, but there are very few other natural rock formations that have such precise geometry. Interestingly enough, both the governments of Taiwan and Japan say that they have no interest in even researching the find and have completely ignored it. Do they? I don't believe that. I don't believe that one bit, but it's interesting. I mean, it could be that that particular place was not underwater when this thing was constructed. And maybe uh, the water came over there afterwards. I mean, there are accounts around the world of the uh, worldwide flood. So this could have been a casualty of that flood. Just something to throw out there. Uh, I don't see how it could have sank, sunk that far. I don't know. Maybe I'm not an expert on that. But hey. We know something that we don't. Number 12. Geoglyphs. People recently began noticing that strange drawings were visible on the ground in open landscape areas of the Amazon, and the questions about who made them and why are still very much unanswered. Known as geoglyphs, they are often found in parts of Bolivia and Brazil, and scientists have been able to date them back to at least 3,500 years ago. It is believed that they may have had an important role as a meeting place or even for rituals, but this is just guesswork and the truth is that there is no real evidence to suggest what their true purpose was. The geoglyphs can be as much as 1,000 feet in length and the trenches that form them are more than 30 feet deep. So far, more than 450 have been discovered in the Amazon, but it is believed there may be many more still to uncover. Yet there are no other remains of the cultures that created them, other than the occasional smashed fragments, so we know nothing about the people who built them or why indeed they did so. No doubt this is not the only mystery that the Amazon rainforest holds. Number. It makes me wonder if, uh, because they're giants kind of giant drawings and you see them from the air maybe there were some type of gliders or hot air balloons back then that people used to look down because it's just amazing how they have these uh symmetric uh shapes drawn and dug into the ground all over the world for 11 moraki boulders New Zealand is a pretty mysterious place itself, with some incredible landscapes and a few unique and interesting species. One of the strangest things in New Zealand is the Moraki boulders, which has been called New Zealand's Stonehenge. These huge spherical stones stand more than six feet high and weigh several tons. They can be found on Kokohi Beach, which is situated at the country's Otago coast. The Maori have a legend that the boulders are the remains of a giant canoe, which which was shipwrecked there in the ancient past. I I don't know how to call this one. I don't know. Maybe again they just kind of settled there or rolled there with some type of natural event, um, or they could have formed. I don't know. 
Or it could be remnants of something that was built on the coast there. But they also have some pretty great nicknames for the boulders, including eel pods, hooligans gallstones, giant gobstoppers, alien brains, and the bowling balls of giants. However, there are scientists who are saying there's no chance these boulders were formed by any kind of intelligent life and have just been eroded to that particular shape by the natural conditions that surround them. And the process may have begun as long as 65 million years ago. Since then, the softer rock on the outside of the boulders has reduced, leaving the circular harder rock beneath. Number 10. Crooked Forest Back in 1930, some pine trees were planted in a section of deep and eerie forest in what was then German Pomerania. Nowadays, this region is occupied by the nation of Poland and is near to the Grafino. In the 90 years since something pretty weird happened to the 400 or so pine trees in that forest and no one has any idea what. At the I saw another video that in, in, it described how to mark trails, uh, the old Native American cultures kind of hung something on a particular new tree that was growing to make it grow with a certain bend. It, it had this a similar type of, I want to say, this isn't exactly 90 degree angle, but a similar type of angle. And as you were walking on the trail, every time, you, every so far, so many steps, or if you traveled every so many, I guess, kilometers, feet, you would see one of these bent trees to show you that you were on the right you were going on the right path. So I don't know if this is a marker somehow and these trees were uh, bent in a way as they were planted because that's what I saw that certain native cultures or first nations what they call them in Canada and Native Americans in America they did these to new growth new growing trees to kind of uh, mark paths so they could be the same type of marker in uh, here in Germany by whoever was uh, residing there before base of the tree, they all grow out with a sharp 90 degree angle northward before turning back to grow to the sky like a regular tree again. This makes for some weird and unnatural looking trees and has led to the area becoming known as the Crooked Forest. In spite of this deformity, the trees are all healthy and have grown to lengths of 50 feet tall. There are many theories on what caused this unusual pattern of growth, including gravitational pull, heavy snowfall and even that the German people who planted them, and who are now long gone, grew the trees this way on purpose as it creates an extra strong kind of pine wood which is ideal for making cartwheels. Number 9. Nazca Lines the Nazca Lines are one of the world's most famous mysteries, and these lines in Peru were created around 2000 years ago. At that time, the people who inhabited this region were known as the Nazca, and it seems they spent a lot of their time and energy. This be carving this here, that previous uh, picture looked like a tennis court. But again, I want to uh, say that I wonder if the people that designed these had some type of uh, air balloon, uh, floating balloon, or gliders, or something. Uh, that they could kind of go in the air to see the results of their drawing. I mean, I'm sure you could, you could make, you could make this type of art or drawing without going in the air to see it, of course. But it just seems like you wouldn't get the full picture from end to end and uh, top to bottom without going in the air. Uh, so I'm just wondering, maybe they had some type of floating, you know, just design some type of floating device for them to see these things, right? Like I said, hot air balloon or gliders. It doesn't have to be anything overly uh, technologically technologically advanced, you know, for now, but something what I consider a primitive version of a hot air balloon or a glider. Just something that crossed my mind. Crazy huge depictions of animals into the ground. 
There's a spider, a hummingbird, monkey, lizard, pelican, and even a killer whale. There are also trees and plants, as well as what some people believe to be alien visitors who shared some secrets of the universe with the Nazca, which sadly were never passed on when the Nazca disappeared as a people. There are also a lot of geometric patterns, showing this was a people with a strong grasp of mathematical ideas. The earlier lines were made with piles of stone and date back to 500 BC. One thing that gave the Nazca an advantage over other groups was their advanced understanding of irrigation, and many people think the lines may be connected to some form of irrigation system. Other people say that since the lines are so huge, the Nazca must have had hot air balloons so they could see them. Or maybe they were just a way of saying hi to some of those passing aliens. Number <laughs> I don't know, there uh, seems to be an alien... Uh alien reasoning behind every uh, huge or crop circle or type of uh, giant uh, carving into the ground. But I'm going to stop right there. I've probably used up enough of your time. I don't. I try not to make these uh, hour-long videos. Maybe I should try one. But I just want to thank you for your time uh, in listening to me. And please, please, please like and subscribe. And thanks again.